Right. And, and now you look at Hunger Games, which now they did just stretch the budget this week from $60 million to $75 million, right, right. But I think they're, they're setting themselves up to succeed more uh, by keeping the budget lower. And, and the Golden Compass, mm-hmm. that, that's such a travesty to me. I mean, the, as Ariel will tell you, Ariel is the one who introduced me to reading uh, his dark materials and wrote me a beautiful note on my birthday when she gave me Golden <laughs> Compass as a birthday gift. <laughs> But uh, I read those books, and, and to think that they only made one film, uh, I'm still holding out hope that maybe HBO or somebody will pick up uh, and do it properly. <laughs> but in, in the meantime, uh, you know, is this a, is this a concern? Are you? I, I asked you, Betsy, because are you afraid that if they don't do it right, could there not be a Catching Fire or uh, a Mockingjay? I think it's a really different situation, partly because of the kinds of films. I mean, when you look at Lightning Thief, when you look at Golden Compass, um, you're talking about, like, high fantasy, where they had to use a lot of CGI, um, where they, you know, were doing really, you know, uh, complex things. They were, in one case, you know, with, with Golden Compass, they were being trying to be as faithful to the book as humanly possible but the book is so long that there was no possible way that you could have condensed it. Um, you know, you had to, I hate to say it, they should have split it into two films. And if they'd done that, maybe they yeah. could have gotten everything in there. But it really that, you, you know, you're saying HBO, that honestly would be the only way you could really do that book. Um, or BBC, you know, just something where you had like a series, um, like Game of Thrones, right. you know. And um, Which is awesome, the nice thing way. about... Everyone yeah, the nice thing yeah, about Hunger Games awesome. is, 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 yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Lightning, <laughs> yeah. Lightning Thief, um, they weren't faithful enough. They they changed huge swaths. They aged the characters. They they made you know it, it, weird random cameos of, of famous people for for no particular reason. <laughs> um, they didn't seem to care about the books at all. So you had that, and then. Here, in the case of Hunger Games, they've been very careful with the casting. They've made sure that Suzanne Collins is involved with the project and the script itself. And they've got a lower budget. They're not going to have to deal with a lot of fancy CGI unless they want to have, like, an explosion here and there, which they probably will do. Um, And, and, you know, the months will have to be CGI and and stuff like that. But it's going to be a lot less than these other films. And I think they're being really smart about it. Um, so, so far, everything seems to be on track for this to be a good film. Um, now we'll see, you know, the, the director could go one way or another, but this looks like it's got all its, 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 uh, dominoes in place for it to be a big time hit that pleases both the fans, the new people who come in who have not read the book, which is key, you have to get those people, um, and the people who, uh, who are just going to love the movie and not the book. Um, I think you can please all three of those groups. Right, and it's something to keep in mind, too, is that Suzanne Collins, from what we all understand, is actively involved in the prog- process, mm-hmm. uh, is on site. So that that, that mm-hmm. might be a special... You, yeah. you can't imagine that she'd allow them to mutilate the book too much. Right, I mean, Rowling was involved in Harry Potter, um, you know, every step of the way. Um, so, it you know, it just seems that that follows you know if the author is involved uh from the start that's sometimes the best uh recipe for success right um and i'd like to think that tolkien was involved because it almost seems like peter jackson uh is tolkien <laughs> reincarnated <Channeled him. laughs> it's been a very neat trick adam <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely uh w- one thing i wanted to say uh one thing we could do to try to help the movie succeed uh, is if we get Kim Shelby's trailer circulating as much as possible because that could get uh, where it's going. Is that something you'd be in favor of, Kim? Oh, definitely. I've actually been in contact with the art director for the actual film, and I'm still trying to get a job. I still believe in miracles. <laughs> so, yeah, he's he's seen it, he's watched it, and... But the production is rolling, so I got a little bit of a late start. But there's still two more movies, so I have no doubt that I'll be involved sometime in the future with the movies. Well, if our That's podcast awesome. uh, starts growing even more, and you know, if Suzanne Collins becomes a regular listener, 
we will definitely <laughs> stress that they should use you in some part in the film. But we did find out. Now, we've claimed that John C. Riley has listened to the podcast, but I'm, I'm going to confess I was actually making that up in case anybody was <laughs> <laughs> But I was not making up about Dio, uh, the actor playing Thresh. That was 100% true. So the fact that we have Thresh listening, that is a sign that uh, our influence is increasing and we just maybe might be able to to start impacting some casting and production decisions at some point. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Before I go, I want to make sure uh, everyone gets a voice here. Uh, Teresa, you haven't had that much chance uh, to talk because we've had so many guests, and then also Lee from The Hobbs. So maybe if the two of you could just share a couple of, of, of insights here at the end. Teresa, if you want to go first. Um, sure. Um, just talking about, you were talking about the films and Suzanne Collins' involvement. I think one of the things that, that helps out with the film projects and having the author involved, aside from the fact that, you know, they're not going to let them butcher, is if there's any changes that are made, it really helps um, for the fans of the books if the author green lights those. Um, is when we know that they're involved, like we know um, with J.K. Rowling, with the changes that um, – came to play, you know, Warner Brothers, you know, they, you know, they, they went to her with any changes, talked to her to find out whether or not, you know, and if, as long as it was something that could have happened in that universe or could have happened, um, you know, and she greenlit it, then the fans would look at it and go, okay, well, if she likes it, then even if it's different, it, it uh, um, kind of changes the perspective of, you know, of those differences. And I think the same thing will happen with Suzanne Collins. She's talked about, um, I know in a, a Borders interview, this was a while ago, but even before, you know, when Catching Fire came out and she talked about the film and, and talked about opening it up and, you know, having, um, you know, different characters being involved, you know, seeing the capital audience, seeing the um, audiences in the districts, um, seeing the reaction of, of the, you know, and viewers and reminding us that we are watching on a screen, you know, showing us that what we're seeing with Katniss, we're pulling back from her. And if she does something like this, if that's involved, knowing that she's involved, the um, the fans will be like, okay, this, you know, if she's good with this, then I'm good with this. Because it's her work and it, it just helps so much. And the same thing with the casting. It's like, how can you disagree with the author? She knows her characters better than anybody. And even though some people will disagree, I think for the majority of the fandom, having her involved is just uh, – is just a major a major bonus and a major um, uh, stamp of approval for for us going into the film. So, yeah, I'd like to see someone try to tell Suzanne Collins, "I know Katniss better than you do." You know, <laughs> <creating> <laughs> the, <laughs> what film. would be really um, cool is if Suzanne Collins made a cameo in the Hunger Games, just like Stephanie Meyer did in Twilight. Uh-huh. Greasy say. Oh yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I knew someone was going to yeah. say that. Suzanne that's Collins. Savannah, that's like your favorite be, character. Let it be said for the record: Suzanne Collins is a much younger and more attractive woman than Greasy Say, probably. By far. So, <laughs> well, yeah, the Greasy Savannah, if you could have your perfect Greasy Say, who would it be? Well, I don't know why everyone thinks I love Greasy Say. It's Pauline who's obsessed with Greasy Say. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> so we decided in our in our casting series that we did at Pictainment, I think that we sort of unanimous, unanimously decided that Cloris Leachman would be an amazing Greasy Say. And I really? still think that she totally would. That is brilliant. I she would definitely agree. would. 